Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. Anything else? It's, uh, it truly is beautiful when you understand uh things that we really should have should have been told you know how to how to create you know and just uh at so many so many mistruths and misguided notions and you know obviously the the problem reality is is a big one another one that that i that seems to get missed a lot is you know well it's it's all about your vibe right like change your vibration and you're gonna you're gonna magically attract everything towards you, and it, it's a half truth, you know, which is what most things are. Uh, you know, it's a half truth because sure, you you know, you change your attraction point, and that changes what's attracted to you. But you also gotta gotta make the moves, and I and I sometimes think it you you can't actually see how the, something's being attracted to you because at the same time you're moving to it. And you don't really know which action you should take. It's just about taking the next most obvious action. And a lot of times our obvious action is clouded um, by a lot of things. You know, what we should do, we shouldn't do, what's good, what's bad. You know, so many, so many aspects. And uh, I think that's an interesting perspective is that there's such a thing as good and bad and there's good things we should do and bad things we shouldn't. And, and it's, a, it's an interesting set of codes that we give ourselves at an early age passed down from our parents or you know, uh, somehow made up that this is what determines being good and then this is, this is what... Um, oh, thanks, you feel my seat. And this is what, this is, what is bad. And so procrastination is a thing, right? And a lot of us think that procrastination is inaction. However, it's not. Procrastination is still an action. And so the, the key is that, are, that are we're talking about here is if you want to create and you want to manifest, there's, there's, always, there's always action to take. Mentor of mine used to say this to me, he goes, Chris, there's nothing you need to do, but there's always action to take. And, uh, and I like that. And what, what, he, what that means is you don't actually need to do the right thing to create something, but you've got to be moving. You've got to be in action. See, we always think that if I do this, then I will get this. A lot of times I take an action and it leads me to something else, you see? So it's, it's, it's never anything that you must do to create, but you always got to be in action because as long as you're taking the next obvious action, you'll get there. But the idea of I must do this and, the, and then this will lead me here, just it just never, ever happens. In fact, uh, a lot of times just getting in momentum, I bump into what's wrong and I figure out, you know, uh, I figure out what I, where I got to get to. Kat says it just blew my mind. What did anyone else's mind just get blown? I'm just in the warm up. <laughs> what's happening out there? What did I say that blew your mind? That's funny. That's funny. So there's, there's, there's nothing to do, but there's action to take. And you must be in action. You must be in movement. You must be in momentum. Because as you're moving, you're going to attract things. Nothing is attracted to something standing still. Nothing is attracted to something standing still. There's always an action to take. There's always something. There's some action. But there's never this exact I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to end up here. That does not work. But however, you're always taking the next obvious action. And this is, this is very important. 
to understand how to find the next obvious action and, and to put this in a set of priorities. So, so I want to ask you, and, and I want to get into some work quite fast today, is what is a choice that you're working on creating right now? Like what is one of your, your true choices? And if, if this is your first call, you might not have your true choices listed yet. Uh, however, uh, what is a true choice? What is, it, what is it that you're really working on? Type them in, you should know them. I've got mine written out here. You should have yours. And if you don't have one written out, you can borrow one of the top three, which uh, I choose to be the predominant creative force in my life. I choose to live my true nature and purpose and I, and I choose health and vitality. Cool, publishing a fiction book, owning my dream home, highly profitable coaching business. Uh, medical research, okay, medical research is a process to an outcome. So what's the end result? That'd be my challenge for you, brother, is what is the end result? Amazing, loving and supportive relationship. Live my purpose, right on, cool. Nobel Prize, nice. If I enjoy uh, in everything I do. So, 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 so my question is why Nobel Prize? This sounds like recognition. You know, I want recognition. So is it, uh, what is the true end result? That sounds like uh, an end result that's really only there to, to fulfill, you know, a need to be recognized find joy in everything I do. I don't think you'll ever find joy in everything you do. Uh, you know, sometimes you've got to do taxes. <laughs> yeah, nice. Certified author. Awesome. Superhuman body. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, that, fair enough, fair enough. I get it, go, it sounds good. I like it. Okay, wildly barn, barn coaching business. Okay, so, all right, cool. Everyone's got pretty good. I like them all. Uh, exposure, yeah, that's great. Change the world, yeah. And the reason why I just challenge you a little bit there, uh, Andy, I know, you know, you just joined, you just here is, um, when we choose our true choices, we want them to just be pure loves, not I want this because it will give me something else. When we do it, uh, you know, I want this because I'll get validation or I want a relationship because then I'll do this. We're actually not in our true end. And what happens is we don't have the true power, you know, so I want to discover. So, you know, to get a Nobel Prize, uh, you know, it's to, 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 to uncover something that, you know, really helps humanity. Does that make sense? Like my true choice is to, that's the true choice. And if that happens, well, that's great. But this is what I'm into. That, you see what I'm saying? Like the true choice is to, 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 to have, or does everyone get what I'm saying here? It's like to go for that, this will just happen. But if you go for this, you might miss, you know, you might miss the world, the world, um, the world changing stuff you want to do. Yeah, cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So, there is an obvious action for that choice, okay? There's two perspectives that you can figure out where to take this action from, okay? So obviously you can, you can figure out what action to take from the current reality. And this is what most people try to do, right? Most people say, okay, I'm here in my current reality. I want this end result. So what must I do to move forward? And, uh, and that's, that's, really, that's really interesting because what we're doing is we're basically basing it on what we know and saying, well, you know, what should I do? They say, what do I know? And then what should I do? So I was really fascinated with how we, how we, take, um, we take our past and we, we give it a higher probability of it happening. You know, 
there's something like, you know, you're, you're 10 or 20 times uh, more likely to die of walking and reading a book than you are by a terrorist attack, or it might even be thousands of times. I, I don't know the exact stats, but you're way more likely to die um, by reading a book and walking along the, the pavement um, and, and instead, of, instead of something else, which is, which is so, so, so interesting. Um, that's really, really, really interesting. And so what we do is we take our past and we give it a higher probability of chance in the future. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, it's, it, whenever I... Uh, that sounds really interesting. Whenever there's a uh, there's an opening for something new, that um, that sounds that sounds really interesting. Like if there's there's a time when you know you go, wow, cool. So this reality just happened. Maybe that's that's what's opening up for someone to step into their full potential. I find this a lot, Tay. Hey? It's like when we truly start getting in our end result. Sometimes a break a breakdown is actually the breakthrough, right? Like that's actually what's what's there, true? So sometimes we go, oh man, this, this relationship I had is just broken up. Well, that's the opportunity because you've been calling in to create the love of your life or holy crap, look at this health thing that's just showing up. I've been, Chris, I've been tuning into something new. It's like, well, that's there. It's ready to clear. I've just been, I want to go change the world. All right, cool. Well, guess what? This thing's just happened in my life. So so a lot of times, you know, just to answer answer that question is, that opening is is created because of us tuning into a new reality right we we tune into that and we go wow okay well what's obvious so so it's it's always i always say to myself i go there's there's never anything to do but there's always action to take and so i always go wow okay cool this is where i want to be this is my current reality so i find it interesting that we always want to put our past onto our future even if the probability of that past happening is so small, you know? We go, well, this is what's happened in the past, right? But the probability of that happening again is very tiny. We just give it a higher weight because it's in our past. And so what we do is we go, well, what do I know to do? What do I know? And that is how we figure out our next actions to take, you see? Rather than tuning into the end result and figuring it out. And this is interesting because in business, I see a lot of people and I go, well, what's the next obvious action to take? And they literally stay in their current reality and they they think that they need to know rather than what I'm about to teach you, which is step, step into, yeah, right on, right on. When one door closes, another one opens, you know, it's like, all right, cool. I'm being, you know, I'm not being rejected. I'm being redirected. I'm now moving in a different current, you know, and I love the word current reality as you guys all know, it's, a, it's the current, it's the flow. So here's the key. Instead of going, what do I know and how do I choose the next step? Instead, we want to do the wisdom process. We want to go into the end result and then from here, ask what was the next obvious action? So this is how your future is calling you forward. And I want to tell you a little story. <laughs> it's just popped into my head. About two years ago now, I was walking along the beach and my dogs were playing over there and, you know, my beautiful wife, I'm holding her hand and it was a beautiful day and, and it, it hit me, this moment hit me and I just went, yes. And I realized in that moment that that was the person who'd been sending all the instructions back to me for so long. And I had walked into that reality that I kept stepping into. So just who, give me a while if that makes sense. I kept stepping into the end reality, sending back the obvious next action. Stepped into the end reality, sent back the obvious next action. I just kept taking the obvious next action. Sometimes it seemed crazy. Sometimes it seemed painful. And then all of a sudden, I was it and I got this feeling. I was like, wow, you know, I, I'm speaking at a conference tomorrow. Now I'm there. 
And that was who was who was been that was who had been sending the messages back to the old me for so long. And that's the way to do this. Okay, so I want I want to teach you this process and how to use your intuition to understand what the obvious next action is. Okay. You know, in order to do it, we need to tap into uh, our innocence, okay? Innocence. And innocence in no sense. Obviously, I can spell really good. But in no sense. We need to tap into our innocence. Our innocence is where we notice the true action not based on our past. You see, as adults, we are so conditioned to, to know how it is, how it is, how it is. What do I mean by that? Well, when we walk out on the street down there, we go, well, that's a truck, that's a car, there, I need to stop, I don't walk out here, that's how it is. That's a door. That's a person. This is the English language, okay, is that's how it is. That's how it is. And so what happens is, is when we're trying to figure out the next obvious action, we can't help but still think we know how it is, right? Even if our past has no idea what the next step is, we still think, well, here's how it is. I need to read a book or I need to get at this. Or that's how it is. However, if we can get into innocence, it's like when you see a child. And by the way, it's uh, it's raining here. Uh, and this morning I went out and got coffee and I saw these two kids. And they were, I don't know, six and seven or something. And they're on their way to school. And they had, they had their boots on and they were running to each puddle and they were jumping in it, you know. And it reminded me of innocence. There's all the adults, you know, like, I don't want to get wet. There's the kids just going, oh, man, I just want to have fun splashing in the puddles. And innocence to me is a state that I used to be in when I was a child. And when I was a child, I remember uh, my, my grandparents used to own a farm. And uh, I would go stay there. And it was magical for me to, you know, live in the farm and to 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 be there and, and be around all the animals. And I, so I would wake up really early excited, like it would still be dark. And I'm from New Zealand. And so New Zealand's cold, hey, like I, it is not a warm place. And so, you know, I would be so excited. I would wake up really early and I'd go out and see the animals. And I had bare feet on and sometimes I'd still be wearing my pajamas or no top at all. And I just wanted to, you know, I just wanted to be there and I wanted to be around all, all the all the animals and see them. It'd be so cold. And I just was in so much awe, you know, like everything was new. And it was so funny because we, me and my brother, we used to have, uh, we used to, our feet used to get really cold uh, on the cold grass, you know. So what we would do is we'd actually run and we would stand in the, the cow patties, the cow poo, because it was still warm. <laughs> and so we would stand in it and it was just so fun and exciting because at least that would warm our feet up. But but as kids, you know, that was just as adults, you know, you'd never just stand and poo. Like you're not supposed to do that, you know. But as kids, it's just we were just there. We were in innocence. We were just playing, we're having fun, and we would get sticks and pretend that they were swords. And we were we were just in innocence. We didn't know how it was. See, to me, it was a magical place, but the truth was was my grandparents were actually just the, the, the housekeeper and the uh, maintenance person for the, the guy that owned the farm. You know, like they were just, you know, basically just, just there to do a job. And they were stressed and they didn't have much money and all these, like all these adult things. But for me, in innocence, I was just there loving it. I was just playing. It didn't matter that I was running with no top on, standing in cow poo. That was the best thing I could think of doing. It was so cool. We, we would we would play with the animals and we just, I was just an innocence. It was just, I didn't, I didn't have any of these worries. Now, when we tap into innocence, we flip, we're in no sense and we let go we let go of needing to know how it is. And when we let go of needing to know how it is, 
that is when we can understand well we can actually tune in to what's the obvious next action because we're not trying to control it <music>